Chaparral biome is an area consisting of various types of terrain, including mountains and plains. The biome is often confused with the desert biome because they share many similarities, such as both being hot and dry, but there are significant differences between the two different biomes. For example, the chaparral biome receives more rainfall per year than the desert biome. Desert biomes, unlike the chaparral biome, also have little to no vegetation at all. Many of the plants found in the chaparral biome are also found in the desert biome. This is because the chaparral biome normally borders the desert biome. These areas are located in continents that are between 30 degrees and 45 degrees north in latitudes and include California, Oregon, Central Chile, the Mediterranean area itself, Central Africa, the Cape region of South Africa, the Indonesian islands, and southwestern Australia. The chaparral is in a Mediterranean climate zone. This means the chaparral experiences hot and dry summers and mild, cool, rainy winters. The chaparral biome can get up to 15 to 40 inches of rain per year. Thunderstorms and lightning are common at the end of the summer and begin in the fall in this biome. During the winter, the temperature can get as low as 30 degrees Fahrenheit, where the summers can get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The animals that exist in this environment learn how to adapt to the hot and dry climate, as well as surviving on very little water. The majority of the animals are nocturnal sleeping during the day, then coming out at night. Some common animals of the California and Chaparral biome are coyotes, chipmunks, mule deer, hares, peccaries, scorpions, great horned owls, and all sorts of animals across the different continents of the Chaparral biome in each environment. This biome is characterized by having both forest and grassland vegetation from shrubs to thorny bushes. In fact, chaparral comes from a Spanish word meaning shrub oak. Shrubs are plentiful in the chaparral biome because they are able to survive on very little water. Aside from shrubs, the biome consists of all kinds of flowers and trees, such as fairy dust, coyote brush, mountain mahogany, French broom, and olive trees. It provides essential protection against erosion and allows underwater supplies to recharge. Moderates local climates, provides important habitat for an interesting assortment of animals, and offers unique opportunities to remain connected to the natural on a local level. One of the major threats to this biome is humans coming in and building buildings. They also come in and build industries and factories at the same time, as well as affecting organisms that depend on natural forest fires to survive. Lumberjacks are cutting down trees and destroying the vegetation in order to make room for building, and the animal food chain is being destroyed because of it. It also allows invasive species of plants that are much more flammable than the native species to grow under them, which has been the main problem in causing forest fires to become more frequent over the past 20 years. Because of this, humans have been finding new ways of combating the flames and preventing future fires from happening, leading us as a society to our fire department and finding brand new ways of being able to reduce the amount of time for a fire season, which is the time of when the forest fire begins and ends. One of the most recent ways to reduce the risk of wildfires is to associate the scarce fire management resources at the wildland-urban interface and force fire-safe building plant codes. This includes new regulation encouraging retrofitting older flammable homes with such things as amber-resistant vents, non-combustible roofing, emphasizing strategic fuel management directly around communities, and restricting development in extremely high fire hazard areas.